Hey, I'm Brandon. This is my Volkswagen SP2, the coolest Volkswagen you've never seen. So you might be wondering, what is a Volkswagen SP2? Well, I'll tell you, this car was built in Brazil for the Brazilian market only. It is a steel body car with an air-cooled engine, just like a traditional Volkswagen would be. But they only produced this car from 1972 to 1976, and they produced just over 10,000 in that five-year run. Currently, there's less than 15 in the U.S. market. So you might be wondering, how did I end up with this Volkswagen SP2? Well, it's a great story. My grandpa, Grandpa Johnny, or Big Dad as we call him, was working in Sao Paulo in the early 70s and wandered into a Volkswagen dealership and saw one of these cars, this specific car, sitting on the showroom floor and knew that he had to have it because he'd never seen anything like it before. He quickly made a deal on the car and bought the car, drove it around for a little while, and then had it imported back into California. He had to pay off a couple of customs officials to make sure that the car could get into the country. This was the very first Volkswagen SP2 to ever be imported to the United States way back in 1974. While Grandpa owned the car, he drove it all over the place. He drove it as far as Los Angeles to Minnesota a couple times. Just really enjoyed driving the car. And that's why 12 years ago he passed it down to me because he knew I would enjoy taking this car to car shows and showing it off to really show what a great car this is. So let's look at some of the details of this car. Let's start at the front of the car. First, we have these four headlights on the front of the car. These are the same exact headlight buckets that they use on the Volkswagen Brasilia and the 412. So if they look familiar, that's why. This is the only emblem on the entire car that tells you that it's a Volkswagen from the outside, which often causes a lot of people to struggle to figure out what kind of car is that. Also, this car has rubber coated bumpers, which was very modern for the time for Volkswagen. And the car has this original Brazil plate on the front, just like grandpa drove it in Brazil. After I got the car, I upgraded the wheels to these 15 inch Mag Industries wheels. They're pretty rare and I think they look great on the car. As you look down the side of the car, it has that same rubber trim like the bumpers. Also, it has this really nice stainless trim with black stripes that goes all the way down the side of the car. Really a cool premium feature for a Volkswagen. And because the engine on this car is air cooled, these louvers are on the side of the car to help direct air into the engine compartment. On the rear hatch of the car is the SP2 emblem. The only thing on the car that says SP2. There was actually an SP1 that was produced for just the first year. The car was too slow, so they gave it a bigger engine and changed the name to the SP2. A lot of people believe the rear end of this car looks a lot like a 911. With that same curvature, those flush mounted tail lights. This car also has those rubber bumpers with the overriders in the back. One of the reasons the car couldn't be imported to the United States. Also, it has the Big Dad, four Big Dad license plate because this car is all about celebrating Big Dad. I also installed a vintage speed exhaust that we had to custom fabricate to fit the car just to help that new high performance engine breathe a little bit better. As we move to the interior of the car, this is where the car really is different than a lot of other Volkswagens from the 70s. It has this really nice dash, this cool like goldish panel, lots of nice gauges, a tack, a speedometer, gas, temperature, clock, and an amperage meter. The stereo has been upgraded. Uh, Grandpa did that before I got the car. It has this really nice leather wrapped steering wheel. There's just two vents in the dash to control the heat. There is no air conditioning in an old air-cooled Volkswagen, but there is heat, uh, which is controlled by these knobs near the brake lever. You will notice that the shifter for the four-speed transmission is wood. And so is the emergency brake handle as well. I had the seats reupholstered a few years ago when I got the car. The rest of the interior is all original. Door panels, carpet, all of that is all original. Although the car is very small inside, it actually has a lot of leg room. I can stretch my legs out in the passenger seat all the way. There is no rear seat. There's just this small cargo tray in the back, but very roomy actually once you're in the car. The car is very low to the ground and the seats are very low as well. 
when you're sitting on the seats, your butt is only about eight inches off the asphalt. The engine is located in the back of the car underneath this rear hatch that can be easily removed to access the engine. The engine in the car was originally a 1.7 liter from the factory. Grandpa upgraded it some, but I took it even larger. Now it's a 2054, so just over two liters. I also installed a big camshaft and 40 millimeter carburetors. It has a Pertronics electronic ignition. The car runs really well for a Volkswagen. I'm really happy with the performance of the engine overall. Driving this old air-cooled Volkswagen is a lot like driving an old Bug or a Carmagia. The car is a little loud. It makes some noises or rattles. The air-cooled engine is always making some funny sounds, especially with those big carburetors on it. It's kind of got that rattle that a lot of old air-cooled engines have from the engine tins kind of rattling on the cylinder heads. The car is a lot of fun to drive though with the bigger engine. It gets moving pretty fast if you want it to for a small old car. It's not fast by today's standards. Remember this car only makes probably 110, maybe 120 horsepower with that engine. But because the car is so low to the ground, it feels like you're absolutely flying when you're driving as I go through some of these turns. It runs out of steam on the freeway due to the short gearing, but on the back roads, the car is a lot of fun to drive. As long as the surface is pretty smooth because the car is so low that any big potholes or anything are pretty scary. Driving the car at night is especially scary just because it's so low and you're always worried about a big hole in the road or something in the road. But overall, it's very fun. It's very comfortable to drive because look at, I have all this room, my arms are stretched out. Uh, tons of room. The seat's not even all the way back. I could push the seat back even further if I wanted to. But I can really enjoy just driving this car wherever I want. And because it's an old air-cooled Volkswagen, there's always that little bit of fear of, am I going to make it home? Because anybody that's driven an air-cooled Volkswagen has had that feeling like, Am I actually gonna make it home today? Overall, super fun car to drive. Gets a lot of attention everywhere it goes. I really enjoy driving it.